Meanwhile, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 631. Do we have any additions to the agenda? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see those. Uh, review of minutes, March 6th, 2023. I wasn't here, but I'd be willing to support those with your changes. I trust that you'd make the adequate changes. That's there. Are you talking to me? All of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in case you need another vote. <clears throat> well, of course, you can vote. Uh, has anybody read for me? I confess I didn't look at them. You didn't? I, went, I read through them, but obviously I wasn't here. So. You did? Uh, I, I will second it. I did read them, but I was not in the second. Did you take note there? of grammatical errors, et cetera? Or potential grammatical errors. Did you take that? <laughs> I didn't read them. <laughs> but I am now. <laughs> I am now. What I like automatically correct you and approve them. Oh, so. no. What I what I already like about this is I like the honesty. Yes. <laughs> We're all up front. Oh, Lack of bullshit. Here. Yep. Well. Anybody feel comfortable about making a motion to approve the minutes? I think we did. You did? I no, said he, would. he would. He did not say he was going to. He said he could. All right. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. And I'll second, them. I'll second them for the second time. Very good. As someone who has carefully skimmed them, I will. I will I've carefully skimmed them myself. Yeah. Right. This is all being recorded, by the way. Oh, oh darn. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Glad right. to have it. The minutes are approved. Um, public comment? Nothing. Okay, so why don't we do our organizational things because we're five minutes early on the conversation with Vermont State Police. Did that meet with your approval, sir? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Ex White Chair? Yes. Protect? Yes. Okay. Um, so we. Uh, so I'd yes. like to motion to um, elect Seth Gardner as. Chair of this select board. Uh, I will second that motion. And I believe what we've done in the past is that the senior member of the select board who's not named Seth Gardner uh, takes over and chairs this portion of the meeting. Exactly. I refuse myself. Yes. Yeah. So, are there any other nominations for the position of chair of the East Montpelier Select Board? Seeing none, we close nominations. All those in favor of the motion to elect Seth Gar Gardner as chair, please say aye. 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 All opposed. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it. Mr. Thank you. Chair. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Sir. To move things along, I would like to elect uh, Carl Etnayer as the vice chair of the select board. I, I think you're nominating. Nominating. Oh, yeah. Yes. Annoyed. And... Annoyed. <laughs> annoyed. Night. Wow. Annoyed. Night. Annoyed. Night. Annoyed. Maybe night. <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can. I'll second it. Yeah, you can second. Yeah, no. Very good. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Congratulations. You didn't say, Thank do you. we have any other nominees? I right. oh, do we have any other nominees before we do that? Do we have any other no. nominees? No. No. <laughs> okay. All, all those in favor, please say aye. All right. Okay. Let so you minutes, were, you let were the minutes note that I recused myself. Is there anything else we need to organize here? Well, in the prior year, it's uh, we also need to authorize a member to sign the payroll warrants, payroll vendor warrants, special expense warrants, so all the stuff you typically do, Mr. Gardner, mm -hmm. Chair Gardner. I can do it again for the following year. I move to authorize the chair to sign all the warrants that were just named, the regular payroll warrants, regular payroll vendor warrants, and special warrants for standard expenditures under the town approved budget and etc you can you can get the exact language from the um, memo the select board memo I'll second that all in favor please say aye aye anything else that we need Gina? there's a note that if we want to authorize an alternate that 
I don't know that you if you that you've done that in the past. So we haven't really. Usually, what's happened is uh, the town administrator has stepped in when yeah. I was available. Usually, I call you or you know, yeah, we you we have conversations change, yeah. around and that you, subject. That correct. Right. So you don't have to physically be here if you're in Florida for a month and something has to be signed. It's okay if Gina signs it. Yeah, I do. Well, Gina it. Correct. Yeah, okay. all I do is I review it. You know, yeah. Errors, if there are, which sometimes there are, and then blah blah. And we would just yeah. authorize her to do that. We could authorize. No, her. We, we usually just have conversations. He does it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I sign yeah. his behalf, I know that I signed on yeah. his behalf. And he previously. It approved. seems like you, you are. That's fine. Yeah. That's it's just so it's a division. So there you. You know that she checked with you. There's a, there's yeah, a, a yeah. text of balance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Usually, I check with them or Michelle does. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and and it doesn't happen very often. Needs to be a yeah. member who gives the authorization. I think a member of the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that's been me. Right, right. So, okay, I think cool. that'll work. Anything else? All right. I mean, I think you can do your rules and transaction later. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we got a couple minutes. There's no change. There's no change. Yeah. Prior year. Right. So I move to adopt the 2023 Select Board Rules of Transaction as proposed, noting that there are no changes from the previous years. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 So we adopted the select board rules that you need action. So we're pretty much on time now. So the next thing on our agenda is a conversation with the month state police. And I think we have someone here to talk to us about the contract, potential contract renewal. Uh, I guess. Uh, you got the floor, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Warner. I'm a sergeant with the state police of Berlin. Uh, East Montpelier is in our coverage area. Uh, regarding this specific town contract that the state police has uh, with East Montpelier, uh, I apologize. I do not have a uh, 2023 to 2024 version of the contract. Uh, our station commander is currently out, and it's my understanding that that contract has to go through uh, the station commander and our channels at headquarters. Uh, to make sure it's all set before it goes to the town. Uh, I'll certainly, as soon as I can get that, I will forward it to Gina. Gina, um, regarding just a brief summary of, uh, it's it's still current, it's up to March 31st, but this last year's essentially uh, town contract with East Montpelier and State Police, um, we have only worked, uh, 57 of the contracted 240 hours uh, for that contract. Um, so, and further, we, we have not worked any hours between January, February, and this month of 2023. Uh, so I don't know how the town wants to consider that going forward, um, but that certainly is a factor that we're, we're not anywhere near uh, the 240 hours, which obviously boils down to 20 hours per month. Um, I'm sort of speaking on behalf of my boss who hasn't quite approved this or anything yet, but another option for the town, just in, I'm not sure what your goals are, or what, what you're aiming for. Another option would possibly be uh, 120 hours or 10 hours a month. Uh, other options would be uh, contacting Washington County Sheriff's Department. Um, I don't know if they do specific traffic control, what sort of calls they would handle when they were working the town contract. Uh, that's something they would they would have to speak to. Uh, but you know, essentially, this contract is uh, in terms of our our labor agreements and our on our side of the house, it's uh, considered elective, meaning we can't order people to work it. It's something that they have to work outside the normal hours of their shift. Uh, so they, they're basically under, under no obligation. Uh, in years past, there's been much more interest in working it. Uh, however, right now we are, we're low staff and we also have 
a lot of other over other overtime that we are ordered or also choosing to work so that we don't get ordered to later uh, as, as part of regular shift coverage and, and other details. Um, so that's that's where we're at, really. I mean, I, I, if, if you have any specific questions. Um, Since you wouldn't have any issues or if, if the town decided to go with the sheriff's department, then? I mean, I, I, me personally, absolutely not. Um, okay. I, you you certainly have goals in mind and, and things you're things you're looking for and the last thing I want to do is say okay we we have this contract for 200 hours or right. whatever and then a year from now you're we're we're doing this again um I don't know I I would like to think our presence on the contract would improve uh however just being honest these these numbers this year a majority of this year uh, this contract here, we we've also opened it up to troopers that work out of St. Johnsbury, because quite a few of them live somewhat near East Montpelier, mm -hmm. and uh, we're we're still at these low numbers between the two offices. Pretty much staffing issues and overtime, regular overtime. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had I, I don't know how you could point to one or two specific things, but that's that's my first mm -hmm. first punch. So the contract calls for 20 hours a month. If if the 20 hours, I guess over the course of the year are not fulfilled, we're not obligated to pay the full 20, 240 hours. I honestly I do we pay this 18 that we only no. pay per hour. We pay as at, 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 at yes. what, what is we, we only pay what's actually okay. <laughs> okay. And the other question is do we have any idea what happened in 21, 22? Yeah, it was low then. It was the same. Not quite. Now we used to have contract for 40 hours. Mm -hmm. Now we cut it to 20 because they weren't meeting before. And yeah, we're like, yeah, save a few bucks on our budget because we're budgeting. We budget this amount. So there's no downside to have a 20 hour contract if it's not fulfilled per month. We just don't have to pay that. Yeah. But if it's an emergency or something, yeah, but now we they'll come anyway in an emergency. Yeah, this is the specific detail. They're cruising around here anyway on a regular ship. So I was told after the town meeting, some people that they really liked it when I and some other people gave historical background to some of the issues that we're talking about. So you already mentioned, uh, Seth, that it was 40 hours yeah. when we originally started this contract. I think you and I were both on the select board when we uh, originally started it. And uh, what we were trying to do was to get um, a a police presence in the town on a regular basis at places that would respond to needs expressed to us by town residents. So if I people, think you're part of those spots. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if people uh, said, hey, there's a lot of speeding going on right here in the village, then we'd say, hey, can you guys on, on your shifts come and uh, take out the village? Um, if we hear from people that the corner of Templeton Road and Center Road uh, is seeing a lot of people blowing through stop signs, we'll say, can you go and uh, to the Templeton farm and, and uh, hang out in the driveway there and you know, issue some tickets. We went into it with uh, eyes open that um, we would not make money off of this. Um, you know, when, when the troopers, correct me if I'm wrong here, but when the troopers are here at our request and they write tickets, then we get a portion of the, the fine. Uh, but we expected this to cost us money to make the town a safer place rather than to be a, a revenue generator. And so, th so that's a background. That's, that's why we started doing this. And I, I will say that um, uh, it was, uh, I felt good uh, when I contacted you ahead of uh, the November closure of County Road. Oh. About the possibility of getting somebody here to be at the barricades there during that three hour time on a Sunday morning. And uh, you indicated to me that you weren't able to find anybody who wanted to do that. So you were gonna come and, and do it yourself, as I recall. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know what sacrifices you made in your life, what, where else you might have wanted to be on a Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, but- That was I, a rough gig. <laughs> <laughs> smiling and saying hi. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad that uh, that we had this this contract with the state police so we could reach out with some expectation that uh, 
you do that. So where are we? Oh, so what's that? Where are we? If, if, if they can't for full 20 hours, do we want to do No, that? I think that so because we won't have we don't have to pay for it, of course, anyway. It might be smart for us to look into it at all, like Washington County uh sheriff's department. They may be able to do it on a little more regular basis. So I'm not trying to be insulting in her, but you know, you haven't worked that much. And so I think you know the townspeople probably would appreciate the fact that if we reached out to some other entity would give us a little bit better coverage. It, even I mean, we know the state police are going to be there when we need them if we call as best they can, but um we should probably look at our options. So we'll just be in touch when I look at it. That meet with everyone's thought process. Makes sense. Yes, and I, I have a hypothetical about that. Um, do you see any special challenges if for some reason we decide to have a contract with both the sheriff and the state police? I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I don't. I'm not so sure what would be the purpose of that. I think the town, I, when I spoke, Washington County dealt with something going on at the elementary school. And when I spoke with someone with the Washington County Sheriff's Office, um, he mentioned that like town of Waterbury had recently done that. They have both yeah. state police right. and because yeah. you could leverage using both for the hours and it made sense because yeah. both of them combined could kind of provide enough of a presence for yeah. what the town was seeking, yeah. whereas one individually could not. Right. So I have had that in my okay. back pocket and I told Washington County I would reach back out but wanted to have this conversation yeah. with the select board this evening mm -hmm. prior to reaching out to Washington County to see what they may be able to do. So I, I think that's something we should keep as an option to potentially have, have yeah. both that maybe have an hour structure that could work for both that likely would fit in our budget this summer. Yeah, I was just thinking about the budget. So. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think we would look at the contracts to get them right. where we know we were within our budget, of course, right. but that right. way we could have hours that may be more realistic for both law enforcement agencies. The only, the only problem with it is kind of hit or miss. So, you know, they do it on a voluntary basis, basically. I mean, we have the contract, but, you know, the contract is really like, it's not a contract that binds you to do it individually yeah well yeah, yeah. <laughs> or as a department yeah. 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 yeah so that's the thing i'm not crazy about with this situation is it's so hit or miss it's like well they didn't work for three months so they got zero hours in well i mean can we get a contract with someone that says they're going to give us this many hours i doubt you're going to do, be able to do that we can't do that like well i think that every police department i i'm aware of it they're shorthanded yeah staff just when, and if you can get, if you like, you like you said, it's a great, it's a great option. Why don't we look at both ways? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd like to look yeah. at both ways, but yeah, it's just that the voluntary aspect of this contract isn't guaranteeing us. So that's what makes me yep. pause and think about the options. Right. Could so. could you speak to any differences that there are between uh, Vermont State Police troopers and uh, the sheriff deputies that would be serving us in a contract with them in terms of training, law enforcement powers, the sorts of incidents that they would or could intervene in? Uh, without without knowing who or which you know which deputy, and I, and I'm not too familiar with Washington County Sheriff's Office. I've I've had nothing but good dealings with them, of course, but uh, there's. I, I can't think of any off okay. off of the top of my head. Uh, there are different levels of law enforcement certifications in Vermont. Uh, it would more than likely be someone someone on patrol would be a level two or a level three officer, and those are varying degrees of the type of cases you can. Uh, I don't want to say prosecute like, like, domestic, like domestic abuse and stuff like that. Yeah. You have to be at like a level three for that. Yeah, yeah, like so, you know, your major felonies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you have to be like a level three officer. Uh, most misdemeanors would be level two. Level one probably wouldn't be controlling or anything uh, proactively. But um, and, and I think most of your, I, th I think a lot of that would also be identified in whatever agreement you would have with the sheriff's department. Or you know, are your deputies going to be? Yeah. What's their pri What's their functions going to be? Right. Are they going to? Uh, right. Is it going to be traffic enforcement? Is it going to be service calls? Is it going to be both? Right. Um, as well, yeah, as they, they do transporting too. So you don't you, maybe a transport officer might be a level one, as opposed to a level two or a three. 
Right. More than likely, you would want to have for traffic, you want it too. But if you thought you were going to have more, if you had an issue where you had a lot of uh, abuse going on and, and, and the issues with families and stuff like that, you might have want a level three for somebody. Right. Well, you don't really know what's going to happen until mm -hmm. it happens. <laughs> no, I know. That's yeah, why. That's so right. yeah, I think a lot of places have level twos that work fine. And a lot of times, also, like you'll see, um, say, if someone's not certified to investigate or be the primary officer for a higher level call, they'll, they'll kick it. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll do what they can to secure things yeah. until someone else with that certification yeah. gets there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that I think we should just look at our options now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just get in touch. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say you could also talk to talk to Barry Town too. Like, yeah, like we'll, that. Like I said, we'll look at our options. Yeah. See what we can do. Yeah. But we'll okay. be, you know, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. But thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for having you. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. You know what? You don't have to do this. And um, at seven o'clock, we're, we're, we're anticipating a rough day. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and that's yeah, your request. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to refresh my memory, okay, this the current contract expires on April 1st? Uh, yeah, March 21st. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. So after that, we don't have any special. Well, we haven't had any for three months, so. What's the difference? Yeah. That's the April meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank Barry. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we have Toby here for the next item, which is consideration of East Montclair Fire Department Memorandum of Understanding for Proposed Radio Communication oh, yeah. System. Um, so, Thank you for coming in, Toby. Yeah, no, just um, I read the minutes from the last time you looked at this, and there were some questions I thought I could try to come in and help you. Yeah. Um, I'm Toby Talbot, Deputy Chief and President of the Board of Directors of the Fire Department. So, um, Capital Fire Mutual Aid is municipal corporation that has joined together in 1970 to bring towns together in their respective fire departments as, as delegates um, to set up mutual aid systems between each other. So essentially in 1970, East Montpelier joined this, but at that point, the fire department was not a town department, it was a private organization and it still is. Yeah. Um, so there is some confusion in the language because it says the town and its fire department, which essentially, if you look at it legally, it means if you don't have a fire department, then you have to have some other way to deal with it. So you're still the town. So originally the town joined the mutual aid system. We have been acting as your delegate, even though by the bylaws and the association language, it's not directly us that are your fire department delegate, but we've been acting as it because that's the way it was sort of adopted back in the 70s. So um, <clears throat> officially, what would have to happen is, so this memo memorandum of understanding about putting a capital fund together for future purposing, you are the member of capital mutual aid right now. Right. If you, so you would sign the document as the member because we are not your quote unquote respective fire department. The only other way to deal with it is that if you decide officially to delegate East Montpelier Fire as your membership delegate, right? if you do that, then everything happens only through us and not through having you guys do anything in the future. So- uh, Carl says something to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess we raised this question at the last meeting that uh, Albert was here for, and uh, thank you for coming in to, to help uh, answer these questions, but I don't see anything in what you provided that really shows that it's a town of East Montpelier that's a member. Is, is there any documentation that it's a town rather than East Montpelier Fire Department Incorporated that joined in 1970? Well, if you read the articles of association from Capital Fire, signed in 1970. It says the town and its respective fire department. It doesn't say a private fire department. So where are you reading? So if you read in the Capital Fire Mutual Aid System, Articles of Association, mm -hmm. okay. If you read, let's see here. So if you read under Article 5, the membership of the system shall consist of Vermont municipalities, and it lists the towns. Well, keep reading. And private organization signatory. 
Right. So the fire department was not signatory to this. Well, the town signatory to it. It was. Do we have any documentary evidence of it? Um, if you, I, I can't tell you that. That was 1970, okay. and I can't tell you that was. But yeah. I'm assuming it. I'm assuming it was. There, there's nothing here that it says East Montpelier. That's the name of a town and a fire department. So it, it, the way I read it, it's completely ambivalent as to whether it was a town or the fire department that joined. And, so, and we've been funding Capital West through the fire department's budget. It's the fire department that pays dues at Capital West. Well, and if and if you guys are fine with us signing these documents, that's fine. We just, I mean, it's, I'm bringing it to you because that's my understanding of you are the member from what I understand. And you're acting as our agent, sort of. We don't, we, don't have, we don't have a fire department. No, but they're acting as the agent of the town because supposedly the town's the one that signed the contract. Yeah, I don't see that that's the case. Right. So well, I, guess, from I, I guess we're part, of, we're part of mutual aid. East Montpelier okay. Fire Department is. I'm not sure the town of East Montpelier is. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, we don't have a fire department. Was the fire department always um, a private? Yes. Place? Yeah. Yeah. It was founded in 1964. So you don't know who signed it? Who signed we don't it know. Well, we know that the fire, well, we don't know. Yeah. But what is, okay, so what are we committing to anyway? So again, so there was some question about what the project was. Yeah. Okay, so right now, Capital Fire Mutual Aid runs the dispatch center yes. in Barrie and Montpelier. Yes. They own towers and, and yep. broadcasting towers throughout the area. So they are currently getting a grant from the state of Vermont for $2.5 million to upgrade mm -hmm. the system. So yep. it's a better system. So yep. all this equipment that they're upgrading now this is a capital plan in 10 years to up to replace that equipment that they put in place now. So this is literally an agreement that says we will participate in putting capital funds away for this project 10 years from now. That's what the project is. Yeah. And I sent you the spreadsheet. You can see the yeah. way it's distributed between all the towns that are parties. It's a 10-year plan. Um, East Montpelier fires portion is 54000 54 yeah. something thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. $5,000 a year commitment. Um, and as, as I mentioned to Seth, we did update our capital plan and we actually included the $5,000 a year into the capital plan. So essentially there'll be no tax impact of East Montreal voters um, because our capital funds are paid for by our revenue. Yeah. So we won't, you know, we're not asking you to pay for this right. upgrade, the 10 year funding. Yeah. So, that, so I guess so. The question is, if you agree to that and you think that's great, we do. We think you know improving that and putting the money aside for the future is great. Somebody has to sign it, whether it's you or us. And if you're comfortable with us signing it, we'll sign it, and we'll and that's fine. Or if you want to sign it yourselves, either either way works. I, a capital fire is not going to yeah look at either either. I, I think that you should sign it because you're the one that's going to be paying the bill. That's fine, I and mean, we're good. And I, I don't have anything against us signing, but. It seems like there's going to be some resistance on among some people for the town signing it, right. because there's some confusion about who's a member. Right. So um, that's fine. And yeah. I guess the only thing, so if if, if I'm fine with it anyway. Yeah. So if you if if it's your opinion that the fire department is the member of Capital West because we are a representative and a delegate, if you guys can make a motion that says we, the town of East Montpelier, believe that the East Montpelier Fire Department is the member of Capital. Fire mutual aid that essentially covers the future. Then essentially, right. we become we become the party that then is responsible for all these interactions with capital. But doesn't that make sense? It does to me. It does to me too. Right. Yeah, I don't want to make a a motion that's a determination, that's a finding based on no evidence. Um, why don't we go? Why do we have to even go there? Why don't we just authorize them to sign? To the extent that we are, that, to the extent that we are uh, authorized to delegate any authority uh, with respect to Capital West to the East Montpelier Fire Department, I move uh, to uh, authorize them to conduct Capital West business or to to, to act as a member of Capital West. Is, is that and report back? And report back. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Is that to you, Toby? Yeah. Okay, but are you saying just on this single item? Are you saying? It, forward, no, forward. forward. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. I second that. Yeah. yeah, 
Could, could you read that back? Did you capture that? No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I really yeah. did not. You're okay. surprising East Montpelier. To, to, the, begins, to the extent that the town of East Montpelier <laughs> is authorized to uh, delegate authority to the East Montpelier Fire Department to act as a member of Capital West, comma, uh, and we, we should get the whole name, the Capital Fire Mutual Aid System. We, we can't just say we're delegating the authority to sign that. No, because that implies that we have it. We don't know that we have it. Uh, we, we delegate that authority. I'll make a point. <laughs> You're an elected official. You can't make shit up. <laughs> you can't. That's what I, one of the things swearing in. Oh, okay. Did, don't did I give you You did still it? do whatever and don't make up shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> did, so so, what I've got is okay. Stand that the town of East Montpelier is authorized to delegate authority to the East Montpelier Fire Department to act as a member of Capital West. I'll fill in the rest of the name. Yep. We delegate that authority. There. Sure. Excellent. Sounds good. Somebody make a motion? He did. Oh, you did. Uh, no, second? did second it. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Right. So I'll just need to get a copy of the minutes so that it shows this so I can yeah. turn it in with the yeah. one yeah. the sign. Yeah. Excellent. Thank yeah. you for your support. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for doing the work. Thank you for coming yeah. in and, <laughs> and being so and being so clear. And, well, and I hope that sure. really improves. I hope it's important. It is. I hope it really improved your communications. Uh, it's supposed to. So basically, they're tying all the towers together. Right now, they have to go up to one tower and then another and then another in order to reach the, the holes. And this is going to synchronize everything all together. So essentially, one tone will go out instead of two or three. Okay. Uh, um, and so clean, clean up the airways for us and yeah. also help us. Um, yeah. Cool. yeah. So it's going to be a you know great improvement in our system. Well, Albert came in and um, he was a little bit flummoxed by the whole thing, but he certainly did try. <laughs> well, and I'm very, and well, very I, did, nice I, I did a lot of research too to just find out I exactly know. what the real language was because I heard there was legal issues and right. concerns about what the document said. So yeah, it was a, it was it it was really great. Good. Like, who's he, who's really supposed to be signing the document? Right. Yeah. So now I'm going to sign. Okay. okay. Well, thank, thank you, Joe. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Um, the next one, and we're on time, is consideration of resolution to hold special town meeting for Kellogg covered article. Uh, so, yeah. okay. So everyone has read the resolution last time. <laughs> and we need to pass that. I'll make a motion to pass the resolution for the special town meeting. Yeah. Any which one could for the loan on the Kellogg Upper Library 26,000, so the 64 buffer rooms. So and uh, Deidre, this resolution is written in the um, select board memo. And I think just for the sake of yeah. the public, we should probably read it aloud. You want to read it aloud? Legal voters? No, the, this is no, the the resolved, it begins resolved at the omission of Article 5 from the printed Australian ballot on March 7th, 2023. It's in the actual select board. You know, so it's on page, the memo, oh. page one of the memo. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. yeah. Resolved that the admission of Article 5 to the printed Australian ballot at the March 7, 2023 annual town meeting was a result of an oversight and not unlawful notice or warning or non compliance within the scope of the warning. And therefore, all other business taken at the annual town meeting shall be deemed valid in accordance with 17 VSA 2662. I would like a Scott's motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I now have the proper call. Uh, do we have a second? I did. Oh, you did a second? Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that's passed. And then um, we have documents for select board review and approval to proceed with scheduling the special election. So would this 
be the time to talk about the notice to voters special town meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have a couple of comments on this. Uh, one is just a pick a uni thing uh, with, with um, punctuation under voter registration. Uh, I believe same day registration should have a hyphen between same and day. And see, who, who am I directing this to? Who's going to be revising this, Rosie? Okay. Are you, are you okay with that, Rosie? Is that I can't hear you? Yes. Yeah, okay. And then uh, finally, under um, right near the bottom on election day, point three, uh, if sick or disabled, I don't think we want disabled or sick justices of the peace going out. So I would amend that to say if you are sick or disabled. about if I say if a voter is sick or disabled? Uh, well, everything else says you. What, number okay. one says you can pick up a ballot. Number two says you can vote. So I was just trying to make it consistent with the, okay. the other language. Okay. What page is that on? Um, it's only one page. It, it's it's, it's on the page. It's only the round. Okay, right there. I think not quite make it. Thank you. And they did not. No. Other than that, everything looks fine to me. <clears throat> it's a valid ballot. <clears throat> um, so we got to set the election. For the town court would be the second April select right. meeting on April 17th, and then the actual election would be on April 25th. Yeah. So what do we need in a motion? You don't. Yeah. You really, the, the resolution is really the motion. I think as long as you are okay with these dates. Yeah. I don't know that we necessarily need a motion for that. Okay. But you all will be signing the, the document, the article of warning. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair Gardner has. Yeah. Yes. And this is where we may yes. see the state police some of those hours to keep the crowds away. Yeah. Well, potentially. Or just control. Yeah, 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 sure. He won't be able to. We'll have to call them specially because they won't be yes. contracting. We'll just have to call them a free beer. Beer? Free beer to get the people in. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, crazy election with a lot of people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that's it with the um, <clears throat> that item, agenda item. Kellogg. Upper article done done. So the next thing on our agenda is Murray Bliss Barnes Road Ashby Management Project consideration of contractor bid results. So I think we have, we have those bids. Paul and Jeff with that. Paul and Jeff. Oh yeah. Well, we got to look at the bids. We have the bids. Yeah. Um, a bit of a range. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> As always, hey, that's a call about it on the way over here. Well, that one's not too far off. Pickle and Matt Foster. Well, that one's pretty high. Fox is usually low. <laughs> They've been doing it for us pretty much. It's Fox Fire. Yeah, they, they have, have right? right? They're not. Yeah. They've done it two out of three times. Yeah. They probably know what it really costs. So you, you, saw the, <laughs> you saw the bids? Yeah, they you saw the video. You, I don't have any fun. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, does Jeff or Paul? Do you want to present your thoughts on the bid? You want to get into the comments? Sure. I, I think I could perhaps get started. Uh, we received the four bids. Of course, last year we had used Foxfire, Nate Ebert, mm -hmm. to do the work on North Street and Sparrow Farm Road. Um, not too surprisingly, uh, they bid quite a bit higher this year, the $41,500. We're looking at this project as being similar in scope to last year's project in terms of the number of trees and the distribution of sizes, roughly 200 trees. Um, Matt Foster uh, is the low bid at 28,800, 
that's actually $900 less than we paid last year for the work on North Street. Um, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> Paul was checking with the references, and I guess he can speak to that. Uh, but on the surface of it, it appears that Matt would be a qualified bidder. Um, he does work for Washington Electric Co-op, and uh, he's actually working over on Bliss Road on a private project right now. Uh, so, Paul, if you want to pick up on the references that you checked. Sure. Uh, I did check up on one of the references from Matt, <clears throat> and it was uh, a local person here in town, and... Uh, I got in touch with them and they were pleased. They said they worked timely fashion, kept them uh, in the loop every day in terms of where they were at. <clears throat> and it wasn't a roadside project, but it was, uh, you know, trees that had grown up into a view. And stuff. Uh, so they, they were quite pleased. And, uh, and I've been trying to get Washington Electric. Uh, I can't seem to get a call back yet. Uh, of course, I didn't have the information until the other day either. So it's mostly been a weekend since then. So uh, I probably will hear. But at this point, uh, uh, they they've worked with Matt's worked with them for years, I guess now. So uh, if if they were a significant problem. <laughs> I think that might not be happening all the time, you know, as a regular line clearing crew and stuff. So, <clears throat> so I, I think we're probably in pretty good stead if we tried out Matt and see how it works. Uh, we did meet with his son over there at, <clears throat> on Bliss Road and, and very likable. It seems to be very reasonable to get along with and stuff. And uh, so <clears throat> that's, we like that. Okay, we got a comment. Um, <clears throat> just a quick question. The, the two highest bidders, um, well, there's, there's no time constraint for this <clears throat> job. In other words, the two highest bidders, the 41,000 <clears throat> says they're going to do it in 15 days. And then the 55,000 said they're going to do it in 20 days. The lower bidder is one that's 34 days. Is is there any issue with when this is started and completed? Yes, there is. <clears throat> Excuse me. We, we're we working with the, what is the life cycle of the insect. And does, does that two weeks make a difference? Uh, that's why there's a bit different. Maybe that's why some are higher because they're going to bring more of the crew in. Just I think if we can award the contract reasonably soon, we'll be in good shape. The mm -hmm. uh, work has to be completed by June 2nd. So we have a couple of months. So the 35, assuming he starts reasonably soon, he should be able to complete the project. Okay. It's a gas anyway. I thought that maybe that's why there's a difference in the bids because they were just- they... It's just a huge gas. When these guys bid on these jobs, that's why you have such a range of days. Okay. Just, you know, it's like 15 Amazing. days, 20 days, 25 days, you know. Okay. Put them, That's why the same go to a second. They know uh, roughly what they can do in a yeah. day. <clears throat> but okay. what, what you're also up against is, you know, look at all the trees that have gone down in the last three mm -hmm. months. Okay. And so they've got that plus all the stuff that would normally come up for them. Wanted to highlight that. And uh, so that that may okay. be one of the factors that's driving these other things up. Okay. I don't want to prolong this. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said that you were not surprised that Foxfire bid more this year than they did last year for a job that was, as I understood it, uh, about the same level of effort. Uh, could you elaborate on that? Um, sure. I've just, uh, you know, Paul and I had talked about it a little bit. Uh, one of the big costs for these logging jobs is the cost of diesel fuel. And, uh, you know, between that and normal inflation, uh, we're kind of surprised that we actually got a bid that was lower than we 
you know, the award that we provide last year uh, for Foxfire, um, you know, it's obviously, you know, a substantial increase in terms of what Nate did compared to what he did last year. Um, and that surprises me a little bit. I wouldn't have thought it went up, the cost would have gone up that much. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, we have a bid that's, that's fairly low. Uh, and, you know, the Randy Pickle bid um, is fairly close. So we have two low bids that are sort of in the same range of cost. Uh, so I'm not quite as worried about Matt going bankrupt in the middle of this project. So um, I think it's a good bid. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you. And, and for the record, could you uh, just give us your evaluation of uh, Foxfire on the job last year? I, I think Paul and I were very pleased about the work that Nate did last year. And I think from Reading Front Porch Forum, I think uh, the community for private jobs that he's done in this area seemed very pleased with them as well. That was, that was my impression also, thank you. Yes. There's another thing uh, which I, I'm i not surprised by is, is that prices on all this stuff are gonna go up. You know, if you talk to the people, I've talked to folks down there in, in uh, Williamstown, Mass and stuff like this, and <laughs> They've had this going longer than we have by a long shot, but they're finding that their prices have gone up many fold, you know, year to year. <clears throat> uh, because first of all, there's probably more trees per operator that need to come down in the course of a year. And so, you know, you, you probably <clears throat> inflate your price a little bit, for that reason, purely aside from all the costs which have gone up. <clears throat> so, you know, in, in that case, both of our little bids were were people that we hadn't had never bid before. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we haven't had any experience with. So that may be an issue. Okay. <clears throat> One more comment on this, then we're gonna act on it. I'd like to make a motion to accept Matt Foster logging and tree service to hire them. That's my comment. Good. <laughs> I like efficient meetings. We need a second. <laughs> second, can I add in the wait, wait, uh, discussion? Go ahead. Foster tree service is a little better, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I like a thousand dollars. Yeah. But it seems like he's reputable and yeah. I think the job is good. Yeah, I just want to note that. that no, no, of course. Yeah, that's, no, that's good news. So we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The aye is to have it, they do have it. So you got a contract. It, it, if I could just uh, make one comment, um, yep. just to give a little background. Um, of course, we've this would be the fourth project that we've done over four years. Um, we're quite a bit ahead of other municipalities on this in terms of some aggressive removal of ash trees. And so, so far we've totaled about a, a quarter of the inventory of ash trees that we've done on town roads uh, back five years ago or whatever, when we did our inventory. Uh, this project will bring us up to about a third of the trees completed, uh, which I think is uh, something we could be proud of. Um, and I would also, uh, if you recall, the we have a, a five-year plan for the ash tree removal. And uh, part of that plan is to do some planting of trees. Um, so we're not just removing trees, and uh, we may look to uh, planting some additional maple trees. We planted some at the rec field last year, and it might be nice to plant two or three more trees there. Nice. I'd just like to know the minutes. Thanks you for your, Thank you. your hard work and, and, uh, and attention to this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a big deal. So thank you very much. We need you. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Chris. And you are. Yeah, thank you. It's going to catch up with us before we get done. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think we're going to move off the ash tree project and move to the town treasurer report. And I don't think the treasurer is here to present the report. 
Is there something you want to draw our attention to again? No, nothing overly exciting. Nothing overly exciting. Is anything exciting at all? Mm -hmm. Town Treasury report. How about the transition to Northfield Savings Bank? We are working on getting everything set up in Northfield. And uh, in fact, he was here today. Um, so we're, I'm not sure when we will officially make the transition. Michelle's working through that with, with Northfield. Right now, we're trying to get this our online access set up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's in the works. Yeah. Do, do we need do we need authorization from the select board to investigate um, investing our funds or or and I had brought up before I was a select board person to purchase CDs to buy treasuries yeah. to, to <clears throat> is is that something that we can just investigate and report that or I would need to look at the investment policy. Yes, I have not read. Okay, yes. and we'll both look at that. We've pretty much just done CDs. Yeah, fact, that's that's historically, yeah. Okay. Historically, that's what we've done. I don't know. Okay. Just yeah. Please. That's how it's worked okay. so far. But just I mean, we, we've got a question from a new select board member. I want to make sure he's gotten the answer to it. Right. We're gonna look into the investment policy. Yeah, right. But I, just, I mean, just as a select board member, you don't need authorization to go off and gather information on right. anything. I, uh, if you're gonna be using town resources like asking Gina to do a lot of work for right. you, then probably good to check in with others. We'll see what the policy is and then yeah, it needs yeah, to be changed. We'll the well. And then it would be also a discussion with Northfield, just you know, oh, well, obviously I'm to make sure, sure you know, as we would with town funds, we're in something safe and secure and you know, no, 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 that's why it makes sense. Yeah, but the conversation I know you do. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Conversation they're probably not gonna be excited that I think it was they want to remain that. Okay. Yeah. So nothing else on the town treasury report to uh, regard No, no, right now. Okay. 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 What's wrong now? Absolutely nothing. Oh, I thought maybe a picture wasn't coming out really or something. <laughs> There's a shine on the top of his head a little bit. Okay, so town treasury report is done. We did the select board organization. We did the rules of transaction. The next thing we are going to do is a 2023 town meeting review. Review minutes from town meeting. I believe Carl had some things to say about those. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I did. Oh, yeah. I, I picked up on that. Yeah. At the beginning of the meeting, you mentioned a few things. Yeah. Well, you go, so, Rosie, are you with us? I believe we're directing our comments to Rosie. There she is. Yeah. Hey, Rosie. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for the detailed minutes. Um, I just have a, a few comments. Um, bottom of page one, final paragraph. Uh, I believe that um, Seth recognized and thanked both select board members who were stepping down. Um, and I think you could just rephrase it to say, uh, Amy Willis and Judith Dillon are select board members stepping down and uh, they were thanked for their service. Because okay. I did thank you. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. And then when you're ready. All set. All set. Okay. Page four, article 11. You spelled Ella Chapin correctly later on, but here it's spelled with two L's. Ella is only spelled with one. Okay. And and then Article 16, I've never heard of a representative um, being called honorable in our state system. I'm sure, uh, she, I know Ella, she's a very honorable person, but I don't think we need that title. Um, and I think it would just help to say uh, Ella Chapman, new Ch Chapin, sorry, Ella Chapin, new House representative rather than legislative representative house with a big mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. capital H. Yeah. And that's it. You have anything else, Carl? That was it. No, thank you. Did, did you want to say our new house representative? That would that would be even better. Yeah, I'm not saying thing. Because she's new, but she's ours, so <laughs> that's right, you know. <laughs> Uh, anybody have any other comments on Rosie's meeting, Rosie's uh, minutes for the coming? Uh, 
What was interesting about the sugar house? But you don't need, you didn't need a permit for that. That's what I was thinking when he was saying it. I know. But yeah, he did talk about it. Yeah. Anything else? Just a hash? No. Only if it's constructive, on huh? or, or, or a joke. <laughs> okay. Do you want us to approve these minutes? Now with the, the changes made? Yes, please. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept. Are you all done with, looking at the minutes? Sorry. With changes? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's doing some other paperwork then. Okay. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Just just a quick aside for two seconds. Did you hear Kevin Ellis when he was on WBEB that following Wednesday? The Somebody first, told me about it. For the first 15 minutes, he talked about our Town meeting yeah. and gave praises yeah. and praises to your performance and the select and the and the how the town meeting and how exciting whatever. I and then he wasn't sure about the, the Kellogg Hubbard Library voting. Oh, right. So I called up and I and I clarified. Oh good. On the, on the oh good, good. Thank you. But he Thank was you. he was I very, he very, was, very, very um I heard he was pretty complimentary. He was, especially yeah. to you, Sam. I oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> were you there? Oh no, uh, no, no, he was he was trying to stay not, not get divorced. He was gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're done with the minutes. Town meeting. Consideration of annual highway financial plan. So I'm giving you a draft of this to review. Yeah. I'm actually meeting with our B Trans representative, Michelle Redmond, on Thursday to just go over this process in its entirety. Um, in addition to the process for if we want to move forward with the repaving of Town Hill Road, we submitting a grant request to hopefully get some funds to offset town costs for that. I see that Guthrie is on, so I don't know if you want Guthrie to speak to the, this form particular only asks for major projects. So in prior couple years, that was County Road um, on, this, on right. this form. Is there a good chance we would get a grant? Is there... I'm not sure. I will find well, out. Well, we probably don't. We already paper. got one for County Road recently. East Montpelier usually gets a lot of paving grants, but they don't give them like every year. Okay. East Montpelier. They, yeah, they but they it's hard to say if they kind of slack since County Road was supposed to be oh. before it happened, but you know. Yeah, hard to say. But okay. it doesn't hurt to always the plot. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So I'm really just giving one. this to you as kind of a preview. I'll bring you the final version. I want to meet with her first before analyzing this particular document. Um, plus, you can just give me an idea. I, I wouldn't know at that time still whether we would get a grant, um, yeah. but I would at least be able to let you know that mm -hmm. I have applied for one um, at that time. So I just really wanted to provide this to you and then now for as a draft. And then if you had any comments, please. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I don't quite get the numbers actually. But they're basically pulling from. Well, the numbers up top essentially yeah. are calculations that are done by the state for yeah, okay. what funds we receive for our roads. Okay. The numbers down below are essentially our highway budget broken down for winter and non-winter. It's just that's just the maintenance. So the repaving Town Hill Road looks that, like a realistic well, figure. So that quote is from Pike. The next page you have after this document is a quote from Pike Industries. That is a that number from Pike. Obviously, if we do this, we would go through an RFP process, which is what I wrote in the select board memo. So this is a number we've initially received. And okay, good. It's, 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 and it's new, fairly new. Guthrie yeah. can share any feedback. He is that just Jim and Overlay, Guthrie? So that is actually, uh, do you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the uh, that's actually milling off, so planing it oh, down yeah. flat first, and yeah. then crack sealing anything they can see for cracks, and then putting a top coat back on it, and doing the shoulders afterwards. What's the advantage of milling it off? That you're starting with a flat surface. You're not starting with a scalloped four ruts in the road. It might not look it to the passerby. That road is yeah. actually hard to open the outside wheel tracks right now, um, just because it'll it'll the water will run, like it, it'll run all the way from the height of the land down past Hawkins Farm. In the wheel tracks, it won't melt out, in in between the wheel tracks, the yellow line will stay white, and the in between the wheel tracks will. 
So they're just milling it to make it flat? Yes. But what's the advantage of that? Well, why can't you just fill in the wheel tracks? It's cheaper probably to mill it than it is to buy all that paving. It it, what it is is you still don't, you're not going to get it flat shimming it because your compaction rate, you're still going to have a scallop there after you're done compacting it. Oh, really? Yeah. It'll be smaller, a lot smaller, but you'll still yeah. have it. So milling is a better way to get rid of the running. Yeah. And you've got a really good base on it. I can go back and look at the history. I think that was originally laid down with three inches of base and two inches of top. And the top, that wear surface, the two inches, is worn through in multiple spots, actually. Well, last time we did, we just shimmed and overlaid. I don't well, know how many. Yeah, I was going to say, it, according to the capital budget, it's at least two or three years beyond, I think, is what we had looked at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the first road we did. So that would be About like, uh, I think that would probably put you somewhere around 13 years, is my guess, since yeah. it's been overlaid. It was the first road we did when I got it. But anyway. And that's only going 300 feet past Brazier, Gallus, and Hill intersection. That's leaving the Montpelier end because it's not near as bad as the rest of it. And Gallus and Hill is actually in really good shape still. Oh, which so those usually get done the same. There's one spot beyond Brazier where the edge is chipped off, and that's why I really want to get out beyond yeah. that 300 feet beyond. It pretty much puts you to the speed limit sign, if you know where that is. The fourth. I think we did two stages last time, though. We didn't do yeah. the whole thing. Yep, right. that's how it's broke up in the capital budget. And what happens to those millings? They go back to get recycled. They take them? Yep. They do not give you anything for them. <laughs> That's too bad. That's good material. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. The, it, and that's why they recycle it. Most of the asphalt now is uh, they need a, place a certain percentage that's recycled anyway. Right. Okay. No, no, I don't even know if you can get virgin asphalt anymore. That's actual first-time use material, 100%. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Does anybody have questions? And uh, back to what, what Gina was saying there, I don't know if we actually did get a paving grant for the second half of County Road, which technically would have been a physical year beyond the first one. So I think oh, we uh, have to skip a year. All right. Well, yeah, we could we get that one. We only have a, yeah. it's always, always good to apply. So the, the other tough. thing that's out there that's right it. now, uh, the League of Cities and Towns is questioning the state a little bit uh, at the state level where they left $13 million worth of class two paving on the budget. So they're kind of wondering how anyone got turned down. Right. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, so meanwhile, the state themselves, it sounds like they went way over budget on their end of things. So oh, they did. Just yeah. about every job was at least 50% over budget, they said, mm -hmm. and behind. Yeah. Dead one. Now, the other thing is, I don't know, I didn't look at the cubic yard price. Is it down? Because oil's down a lot right now. So that was, uh, that's not really a quote technically. That is a budget number. So, and that's okay. all on a sliding scale. It, if they gave you a number today, it would be dis different in two weeks. So, right. they, and it's, that's the way it goes with the state. I mean, that's, they give you the closest number they can and it's on a sliding yeah. scale. So okay. last year it was changing week by week. So. Oh, I know it was terrible last year, but this year is a lot better right now. Yeah. So. So if, if things hold out, they should be, in theory, it should be the, the same or better than what they have quoted you. Okay. All right. And that's also, I don't know if it's in there, but it's overlaying that end of Cherry Tree Hill that's always full of big holes. Oh, that needs a bad. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that'll get covered over. And oh, yeah. then uh, Deerfield Lane, the new one, the new development below Connors. Yes that's going to get an apron on it that'll be i can't remember if it was 15 or 20 feet long so it'll be an actual apron for a private drive yeah and uh and the ones down below that that are breaking out into the travel lane now uh, we're going to extend those just a little bit more yeah it'd be nice to get rid of that gully that keeps happening by the pavement around the corner of cherry tree there yes it just keeps walking out there it's like man yeah if, if you come around there with a trailer behind you, you'll see how that happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. It tracks into the, uh, off the road. Yeah, you can be completely over the yellow yeah. line. Even a short truck with a short trailer will still be falling off the edge of the blacktop. Yeah, it's bad right there. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I don't want to bore everybody with more details. So, anybody have any questions for Dr. I'm sorry. So, so yeah. just in terms of the, are we on the town road and bridge standard, the network inventory? Now, yes. Okay. So, well, let's, let's, uh, so we're done with the annual highway funding. Yeah, you'll see that okay. again next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next item, consideration of annual certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory. So I am wondering, um, could you help me here, Gina, with the second paragraph? Um, we, I, I have never heard anything to the contrary that our adopted standards meet or exceed the minimum standards included in the June 5th, 2019 state approved template. So, so that, that seems like a no-brainer to, to check do. However, you have in the select board memo said that um, previous town administrator uh, Johnson noted uh, in the select board annotated agenda from March of last year that the network inventory may be due to be updated. And so if we have that information, can we in good conscience certify that we do have an up-to-date highway network inventory, should we just check off do not at this point, uh, since we don't know? And if we do that, what sort of implications does it have implications for our funding? Guthrie, do you know what, he didn't indicate that this was anything urgent, and I'm not, I know that I update when you, I'm not the, I'm not sure what it means about net highway network inventory. These are one of the questions I have for Michelle Redmond, but I know all the hydraulically connected, roads we update their system so yeah i'm not sure that we're that out of date i think we are updating as we go i the way i read his last note and again this is the point in me looking into some of this i'm not sure what if this is just them doing a formal audit of it but we are regularly updating as we perform work on our roads that's uh what i'm hearing from regional planning that they're much like they've done in the past. I think right when I started, we did one uh, erosion inventory. And that sounds like we're due to have another one, which will be through them also. Which it, it's, we're supposed to be keeping up with it now as we repair things. We're able to go in and say, yep, we meet as we work on things. Okay. I think this is more of a formal review, mm -hmm. but yeah. we up time he does work there's a yeah. there's a whole state system yeah. and we have to update and for example for the most recent grants that we did for yeah. the culvert work that he did in order for us to even get our grant reimbursement we have to make sure that we update those road segments on right. that system so i actually okay. did meet with someone from vtrans to go over that process so i think this is more of a of an overall formal review so I don't know that we would want to say that we are not, yeah. um, because I think we are as updated as we can be on our own. Very good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do we need a motion to adopt that? And then or do we just need to sign it? For them to, for you to sign. I, well, it's for you to sign. Honestly, that's sort of you did a It says duly authorized administrator. So maybe that's you. You're an administrator. Last, I am year, last year, Bruce, Bruce liked to type his own forms. So yeah. I've actually used the state form here. I'm okay. trying not to recreate a lot of things. If the state gives me a form, I use their form. Yeah. He typed a separate form in Word that you all did sign, that okay. the select board did sign. Well, it's five lines. So. Yeah. So I think the intent is that the select board signs this document. Yeah. All right. So I think we just signed. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So I can sign it here. And pass it around. Jeff, there's only four of us that so don't sign twice, all right? Oh, very good. Cut your quick. Well, I'm so That's glad you're with us. That's why I'm here. <laughs> He's a numbers guy. Oh, he really is, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, three twenty. Push him to get out of the way. All right. Um, so we'll, let's move to the next item. Oh, <clears throat> you want. Do we have to go on potential executive session? I don't think so. I think that I I I put that there. Um, I don't okay. believe that would be there if probably maybe you were speaking with someone that wanted to go into. But I don't I don't see any reason. Okay. Nothing okay. I have to say or that's nothing sure. that I was in any way confidential. Okay. Um, we don't have any any time when we have more than one person going for one position. Yeah. 
you know, that's highly unlikely. Um, Thank you. So with this, um, well, I mean, I kind of outline everything in select word memo, but um, the biggest thing I want us to discuss is the select board. That particular open position has been noticed on the town website and from the forum. Um, there is one person that has expressed interest in joining the select board. So my question for the select board is, when would you like to speak? No one else has come forward with the exception of this one individual. So when would you like to speak with that person to potentially appoint someone into the vacancy on the select board? When's our next meeting? April 3rd. Oh, well, I'm not going to be here. <sighs> You're going to zoom in? I think I can. Okay. It's difficult. Yeah. Oh, we miss you. Well, you, you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would like I to do it. is after this meeting tonight, put something on the website, put something on Fort Porch Forum that says, hey, we have all these open positions. Yeah. Um, and then in that communication, I would list the select board position. Yeah. But then state at what meeting the select board right. would be speaking. So please right. get me if anyone else is con out there contemplating it. They would yeah. know the dates that they would absolutely too need to let soon? Us know. I mean, this is the twentieth plus two. Yeah, weeks. yeah I, think but, give, I think you should give. I think you should give. Yeah, I month. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll put it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be the seventeenth. Right? Yeah, let's do it then. Yeah. If anybody's going to be joining the select board, they should, you know, have an experience of you in person before they say yes to that. Yeah, but you know, well, I'm a chameleon. I, I can <laughs> just wear one of the fake noses. And, and, uh, and then the real one can come out when they. You know. But you don't know what's one the real one. Yes, it's true. So, okay. Is that good for you? Oh, that's fine for me. The seventeenth. Would you want to yeah. target the seventeenth for all of these positions for anyone, and we could consider anyone at that because then I could just use that yeah. name for all of these. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all the time people, we don't have to use. Yeah. We need three people, yeah. but right now there are two. Those are the only yeah. I three people. It. But yeah, I would. I mean, I think it's important. Yeah. We have the emergency planning committee. That's going to be a newly formed committee that ideally would like to get that mm -hmm. up and running as well. So. Yeah. I don't know if you had a chance to read the state statute on filling empty positions and the timing of that. Uh, we discussed that uh, a year or two ago in connection yes. with one position yeah. at the time. And basically, I think the exact wording of it, it, was but it, it gave us a lot of wiggle. Leeway. Yeah. 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 The, the, the ones you have to be a little more particular with are the elected positions, i.e., the select board, yeah. which is why I got that notice out when I did that mm -hmm. you do have 10 days after. The town meeting. Okay. There is a vacancy there to have at least a notice that that vacancy exists. Right. Now, I'm sorry. It just... doesn't apply to the appointed positions. It's very different than the elected. I, I was not sufficiently clear. I was speaking about the the rules for appointing someone yes. no, I to, that. No, yeah. to an elected position. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Once the note, it's the yeah. notice that needs to go out right. there. And then so you have flexibility from there. That's why I wanted right. to get the notice out correct right. to let people know. That so there thank you for covering that yeah. legal base. And there is some um, encouragement in the law to move with all deliberate hate, but it's not like we have some set deadlines yeah. to meet. Yeah. Well, and I think it's appropriate to give people time to do that. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. that's right. why I kind of like that it's out there. Now, this will be another reminder. So, again, anyone that, yeah. that's out there contemplating can. We can always draw the planning commission too for another member. I think we have that flexibility for the DRB. I think there's three members right now in the planning commission or the planning commission on the DRB. But I can't remember how we set that up, but I think that you could draw off the planning commission if you had to, which actually is pretty appropriate. Oh, yeah. 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 Because if you just take a, somebody off the street to get, go on a DRB, it takes a long time to get up to speed. So if we're going to say that we're going to consider the applications at the 17th of April meeting, mm -hmm. when do you need to have them, Gina, to be able to process them and get them ready for that meeting? Um, I would probably say maybe the Wednesday or Thursday before that meeting. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So like the 12th. Yeah. yeah. So we'd be looking for a letter, letter of interest and some background information. Mm -hmm. 
So the next item on the agenda, this is an important item. It's always on our agenda. Discussion on time management in light of COVID-19. One comment about appointments though. Oh, there is a list of proposed appointments that yeah. I would need you to approve this evening. Oh, so okay. there is a long list of proposed appointments that need to occur now. One most importantly being town tree warden is on that list. Um, but we have first constable, second health officer, the health officer, town service officer, animal control officer, oh. um, assistant animal. All, all of these are appointed in March. So okay. we have all of the March appointments. So we do have a long list. Of uh of those appointments. So but those are all ready to be appointed. These are correct. Yes. So what we and the only done... and the only changes that we have from prior year, everyone else is in their position. First constable technically is he was elected as of now. That position is appointed. So um John Boucher is our first constable, was elected, so he's on now the list to be appointed in that <clears> position. <throat> Uh, the cemetery sexton is actually going to be John Boucher um, with the assistant now an assistant cemetery sexton, which of uh, Elliot Morse, who was previously the cemetery sexton. Um, Recreation board does have three new members, and you do have letters of interest included in your documentation for the meeting for those individuals. And then the town garage facility improvement committee, uh, T. A. Jenkins, is on the list to be appointed to that position. I heard to that committee. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we did make a change about a year ago. Uh, we now have an animal control officer and a second animal control oh, officer. Oh, is it a second? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will change that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, well, we would just have one motion to point out. Yeah, yeah. that's usually yeah. in yeah. the right. past, you've had the list. Yes. And then there's a motion to yeah. appoint. Yep. As presented with the exception of now in the document to retitle um, Amber Perry as the second animal patrol loss. But we had it last year. Yeah. Yeah. It maybe just didn't get reflected in yeah. the document. Yeah. 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 Okay. So moved. Okay. <laughs> and, and I will recuse myself. Oh, wait, I'm on there too. You're going for yourself. Okay. All of you are on. We're all, We're all on there when he's done. Okay. Never mind. Seven, no, I'm on the capital. Yeah, you are. You're, yeah. I don't think I'm on it. Yeah, your name's on there. You actually are on it. Oh, I am? Yeah. Oh, so, so, so much better. Oh, yeah. Town Drive. Actually, I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah. Okay. Motion was made. I'll second it. Very good. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Appointments to be reviewed and discussed. Um, oh, yeah, thank you. We we also have the um, the charter committee. Yeah, I didn't put that on there, but that was a question I had. So, yes, there are two committees in particular that I'm not sure that are active or valid at this point. The old Laurel Farm yes. uh, committee done. and then the town treasurer collection committee that was formed to hire the town treasurer, which we have in place. So. Yeah, it's a question for the select board, and I wasn't sure. I I noticed the town charter committee, but I left that as is. In some of these committees, there's no term, right? So the names are just kind of there. So yeah, right. people know they're on them if they see them in a town report, but it's probably not something that's regularly followed up on. To okay, sure no, I'd so. I'd say both of those that you have listed were ad hoc committees, and their work is done, so they don't exist anymore. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's correct. I, I would I would take them off just because it. If God forbid we needed a new treasurer, we might not want to have the exact same people. We, we, well, you just have a new committee. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. I mean, some of the same people might be so there. Oh, of course. Exactly. Exactly. Of course. Right. On, yeah. on the other hand, with the charter committee, I believe that we decided that uh, the charter is a living document and we wanted to have the committee sort of in standby mode with the idea that, you know, we say, hey, we do want some revisions to the charter. Some of them might say, hey, I don't want to serve anymore. Then I right. moved out of town or something. We'd appoint more, but the committee is still there, is my memory. And I was going to suggest that we start looking into some, you know, the positions that we've talked about in the past. Town auditor, which if you read the paper, many towns, a town right near us is voted to get rid of the town auditors. So that's something that we could pass off to the charter committee. Mm -hmm. 
and you know the list of things is ongoing also. So there is some things that could be done with yeah. that town charter committee. Right. Um, so where are we on this discussion here? Yeah, LaPearl and LaPearl can go bye bye. Yeah. They showed you. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Yeah, on the, two other special okay. Things. Okay, I believe on the town charter committee that uh, Karen spelled her last name G R A M E R one M. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, can I move to the next item, or do you people want to talk more about when? Well, we we took a vote on. All right. Okay. We're all set, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the next thing was, uh, as I just mentioned, the COVID-19. Town management light of COVID-19, do you have anything to add to, add to this discussion here? No, not, not at this time. Not that's at this time? No, really? Okay. Uh, we'll Something I do think we could discuss whether we want to keep reporting data that I think we all agree is not <laughs> I mean, at some point, I'm going to guess the CDC is just going to stop reporting this. I would, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I would, I would think. Um, what do you guys think about putting something on our agenda for our first meeting in May? After because uh, Joe Biden has said that he is going to end federal COVID emergency right. stuff and just the emergency is over. Yeah, and, and just see if we want to have this continuing on our agenda. Yeah, it's becoming a little tired. Really. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's taking up valuable space. And, you know, our town administrator has other things to do. Yep. So perhaps yep. we don't have to have it on it anymore unless we have an emergency. Let's, say, let's wait until the federal, oh, federal okay. emergency is over in May. Oh, okay. that's we'll wait until May then. And All right. Yeah, we don't want to act too quickly. Don't no. Okay. no. Um, do we want to do our other business now? We have some other business. Yes, we probably ought to try to fit that in on time. And the other business was the Four Corners Schoolhouse mold issue, which I read. Um, What's the story on that? I guess there's some. Funds? I guess there's some mold there. No, um, I read it too. But do we have to allocate funds, or is it just no, just in no. FYI? We don't even know. Uh, we don't know what it would cost. We don't know what it would cost, and I would, just, just I would suggest point. to them that they do some remediation. Just FYI. They should do some common sense remediation uh, <laughs> in their budget at this point. But Yeah, so Carolyn came to me to talk about this before yeah. she said that to me to send out the, the yeah. rest of you. Yeah. And um, I asked her to remind me who owns the Four Score Corner Schoolhouse, and she said that the town sold it to the Four Corners Schoolhouse Association for a dollar, and that all residents of the town are members of the Four Corners Schoolhouse Association, uh, whether we want to or not. And uh, then she was also curious about ARPA funding for that. And I said, yes, and we're setting up a process for that. Um, don't want to encourage you to come in uh, with hands outstretched for our funding because if you do, do that, and a lot of other organizations are, we want to get our process in place first. Uh, but it does seem to me, since town organizations can use the Four Quarter Schoolhouse for free, that it would be um, appropriate for her to come in and just alert us to the fact that they've got such a mold problem that they are unsure about their ability to let other people use the Four Corners Schoolhouse without having health issues. And so this is a town resource that we've been used to having. And until this gets remedied, it you know, may be out of commission or at least partially out of commission. So I suggested that she come and talk to us in that spirit. Well, is, there's nothing they can do to remediate some of the mold problems on their own. We could have that discussion with them. Okay. I mean, we're not going to take a lot of time on that, but sure. it can take some. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're looking for. No. Money, I, I, I had the feeling, but yeah, they yeah. never identified how much money they needed. No, no. I was like, okay, well, thank you for the alert. But, you know, if I was an association running a building like that, I may try to do some stuff 
that was relatively inexpensive. And uh, to rem to you know knowing the situation. Knowing the people that are involved that are involved, I expect that that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I would think so too. Right. But I guess if she wants to come in and talk to us about it, that's okay. Uh, but if you're gonna talk to her, I would say she better be maybe put some numbers to some of these items that she was talking about. Well it, but, it sounds like expense. Yeah, again, and that's what I was suggesting that she comes into the select board, mm -hmm. that the framing be, hey, we have this town resource mm -hmm. that is out of commission partially or fully because of this mold issue. Just okay. so we know. He that. is out of town, I believe it was through April 6th. Yeah. So asked to come to the meeting after that. Yeah. Do you, so I'm just, I'm just planning to schedule her to come in for that meeting. Would you rather, I don't know if they'll have quotes or I don't know if they'll have well, it sounds like. You, doesn't really matter. Okay. I, I'm not sure. I think they want us to fund something there, mm -hmm. is the impression I have. If you want funding, then you have to come up with a number. If they just want to come in and blab about it or talk about it, he's welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the expectation from, you know, we're, we're not going to come out with dollars at the at any meeting in the near future. No, I think this is just alerting us to yeah. the state of a town resource and okay. making sure that we have the relationship going forward. You can see in suggested course of action number six that they plan to get cost estimates for everything for a complete job yeah. to help them fundraise and then check on grant, get estimates yeah. from Efficiency Vermont and uh, Capstone. Yeah, they don't need our, our permission to do that, do they? Absolutely not. No. Yeah. I think they, they wrote a really, really good report yeah. here that just documents everything and yep. plays with yeah. the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I bet it. So I guess she wants to come in and talk about she can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'll start the time. Yeah. yeah. So good enough. Perfect. Okay, so that takes care of that. And then uh, we have to look at Dudley's liquor and tobacco license. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. So business entity name is called J.R. Byron now? Huh. It's J.R. Byron doing business as Dudley's. Okay. Yep. Rosie, I'm trying to remember. Did we did did we do a motion? The last one for these, or because really the board right. they they moved to um, to have the clerk process the applications, basically because of the vagueness in the law about approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And Dudley's is the only store in town that sells tobacco. Okay. So I guess we just need to, kind of to give it to Rosie to process. We don't really have yes or no on this. That's right. Really right. No. Basically, what we did in the past was if we had something to say, we said it. Yeah. So we just let it go to, to Rosie. Mm -hmm. So. Can we just say no objections were raised? To right. Sure. The town clerk process. And let, let the town clerk process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You okay. made that. I'll make the motion. You made the motion. Okay. Who's going to second? I will. Okay. John seconding. All those in favor, please say aye. Wait, 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 wait. I thought we were just saying that we uh, noting in the minutes that no objections were raised. To the oh, we can do that, but we're still. Uh, 
making it a motion to authorize her to process it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Probably not going to hurt anything. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Okay. So we took care of the other business. Um, now the town administrator report. Is that it? Detailed report here. Yeah, not much to at this time. I could oh, yeah, congratulate you on this um, future oriented town administrator report. Yeah. <laughs> I was tired of the time I got with you. I got the warrants right here. Yeah, I checked. Oh, this is the article one for special account. Yeah, so you have the one. It's fun. Yeah. You already gave me the highway. I think we have a version of that in the just to know. Yeah, there's that. And then we have some time. Oh, wait. How many minutes as approved? Well, there's going to be changes to yeah. those, so don't worry about signing that. Yeah. There's all we got to make a final. You'll sign those at the next meeting. Right. Right. Okay. They're approved as of tonight, but you'll yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 next meeting. And this is, the, oh, I already signed one of these. The town road and bridge standards. Yeah, you already so signed that's already you signed. Ignore that. But mm -hmm. there's something else here. Hmm. MOU is this the oh this is the, oh you don't need to sign that you don't need to sign that right okay correct you can just take care of those yep yes ma'am and I signed this was everyone supposed to sign this one that's oh. your payroll vendors yeah that's already signed that and this is the that's the actual yeah the actual one correct yeah. And not a very big one. Maybe the key bank. And you don't have anything on your before is your memo no no okay. to the town administrator i was busy with everything else on this <laughs> a lot of stuff here yeah 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 that's yeah. enough, enough time while everything else this weekend so yeah <laughs> well, so at some point we're going to have to do something about looking for the police contact Oh, I'm going to email. I need to just find the name of the Washington okay. County right. deputy. Yeah. Um, so I will read that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I will do that tomorrow. Okay. I will try to get him. My, my hope is if he can, I would like to get him at the April 3rd meeting to come in. That's speak. good. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. like I said, I just I really wasn't sure what VSP would say. If they would have any more capacity or not, you know. Well, it just seems like it's been they've given us less and less coverage mm -hmm. over the last few years. That mm -hmm. just really yeah. Just happened. When you read last year's, it was a downward. Well, I've been on the line up to know what's been going on. Yeah. First, we had forty hours, and just for budgetary reasons, because they weren't even coming close to forty hours. Yeah. Well, let's do the twenty hours because it's a better number, and that's what they're really doing. Well, now it's like not even ten hours. So if they hedge, you could call Barrytown and yeah. Berlin. They might be interested to Berlin's down here, you know, Berlin's not that far away. Mm -hmm. So they might be willing to do that too. Well, I think the county was pretty, uh, this was a few months ago yeah. that he was dealing with the, the issue over at the school. Um, that's the whole project, by the way. That's the thing with the um, bits and flats. Yeah. But um, when he came by, he seemed pretty positive that they didn't have capacity. So, you know, I told him, and he was the one that actually told me that they had recently signed with Waterbury to oh, support them. That's good. And that Waterbury Maybe they using both, they were kind of dividing up. I forget how they were splitting it, what what the two different agencies were doing. But um, so there's certainly a potential. Yeah, maybe they have more options. The Waterbury eliminated their police department. Mm -hmm. And then they had three police, uh, state police that were assigned there. Three units would be there. Both different 
I didn't figure it would work that well that long. <laughs> what? <Huh? laughs> I mean, yeah, the public safety headquarters is right there, too. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we'll see what we're taking county, yeah. but I mean, I will try to see if he's available on yeah for the April third meeting to sure see what see what they can do, and then I think as we find that out, that can frame the discussion for where we kind of go from there. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. I think that's a good idea. So Scott, there's a traditional role for the newest member of the flood board. He's raising his hand about something. Yeah. I I wonder when I get to learn the special handshake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I will make a motion to adjourn. Very good. You're so quick. Go to the number two. You want me to make a second? Sure. I'll say. Oh, you're second? Yeah. All in favor, please say aye. 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 A